Hey everybody, it's Eric Johnson from Air Throws Nation. In today's video, we are gonna talk about taking a collegiate NAI, a thrower, came out for some private training, somebody whose dad has been using our system for multiple years. First things we were gonna focus on was teaching him how to stop being so upper body dominant. So first day, that was one of the first things we noticed. He's not creating a lot of length, he's not creating a lot of whip, and the upper body is a little too active and it's moving too quickly, which means he can't get the lower body ahead and that is going to diminish that nice pull whip that we want to achieve in the discus. So as we kind of worked, we worked through and you're going to see he's a little bit short and you're going to notice how he progresses over the course of two days. So one of the things you're going to notice is that he kind of drags the left leg is really kind of slow from the back of the ring to the power position. That is due partly to what I just talked about with that upper body. There you go. That was pretty good. We're gonna move into day two and we're gonna be looking at how do we kind of slow things down, control movement. So here I'm, I'm walking him through a drill that we kind of prescribe for our throwers, which we call it, it's, it's a step drill. We wanna feel the sweep leg kind of touch the ground because we're trying to teach how to set up the entry axis and that's gonna teach him how to get off it and that's gonna improve that speed from the back of the circle to the power position. Now, one of the things we're trying to do here, you notice we're, we're trying to lengthen him out so he's got a short wind up. He's kind of in his shot put rhythm, his rotational shot rhythm, and you can be a little bit more upper body active in the shot. You can't do that in the discus. It's going to make it difficult for you to get your lower body ahead. And so that's what we started to do here is slowly start to tweak. We're doing a controlled start, and that was helping him get on balance, come around a longer path, and then that set us up for our third training session. Better? Much better and we went strictly on rhythm and we wanted to make sure that he was starting to feel how to lengthen and stretch the throwing arm. And that's really important. So what you're gonna notice is we're kind of moving through it and we had to really start training the start. One of the things, again, we talk about in the throwing chain reaction system is setting up the throwing chain reaction. We set up pillar one. So we wanted to get him out of that kind of short, squatty, turning type motion out of the back and we wanted to create that longer reaching, delayed upper body moving in the lower body nice and fast. That's where we started changing up his windup. We changed pillar one. That was really the thing that we've looked at because he was throwing short the whole time. So now you'll see we're looking at the hand position. I'm showing him how to move everything around and he's, <laughs> he's of course moving too quickly, short and jerky. And here in a second, we're gonna kind of compare and you're gonna see just how the subtle changes made a huge difference. That was closer. That was closer. Was closer. I'm like reaching out. So again, now when we look at day one, day two, and day three, when we look at it here in slow-mo, you're gonna notice that they all kind of sync up. He was moving much shorter on day one, little more controlled. We were trying to control things to set it up, but you're gonna notice how it's a much longer movement on day three, and that was getting him to start getting into that nice rhythm. He could even out his orbit. He could do a lot of things that were gonna improve technically, and this is going to make a huge difference when he's focusing day in and day out on how to improve his technique. Hopefully that kind of gives you guys some insight on some of the things we're focusing on, how you want to think about your training, and how the little things make a huge difference. So thanks so much for watching. Be sure to comment, like, subscribe, check out the Throwing Chain Reaction System in the links either in the description or in the bio, and we will see you on the next video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed today's video. As you can see, there's a lot that goes into what we do with the Throwing Chain Reaction System. If you would like to learn more about how to structure your practices, and find the things that help unlock your potential, click the link below and we will see you on the next video.